Well, thank you. Um, obviously a tough loss for us today. Uh, played a, a, an excellent team in Alabama. Um, they pitched well, played some good defense, uh, had Tommy hitting. Um, and, you know, that's what it takes to win those big games. Um, I'm so proud of my uh, team for the way we battled right through to the end. Um, uh, second, I'd like to thank uh, our administration uh, for providing us all the people that we needed to make this a successful season, especially on the road, uh, having the managers to help out, uh, you know, press, uh, everything that goes along. There's so many people who work behind the scenes, and I want to take the time to thank them for that. I want to thank the city of Oklahoma. Um, and uh, ASA Softball, USA Softball, NFCA, um, and everyone that's associated with that, uh, the NCAA as well. Um, of course, the umpires, thank you for your time. Um, and uh, you know, right now, it's back to the drawing board for us. It's always hard at the end of your season, but there's only one team that's going to leave this tournament happy. Uh, well, what I consider happy, so, <laughs> you know. But uh, um, it, it is what it is. Uh, it's a tough loss. Hopefully, we in taking that next step, I think we've got better each year. We've uh, we've competed. I hope we've taken that next step and we've learned something from this experience uh, to compete next year and, and make it back and make it into the finals. Uh, we're just short of our goal. Uh, to my seniors, uh, Courtney Seo, uh, Alexa Peterson, Kylie Quico, uh, what a tremendous leadership role they were this year. Uh, they really had a great blend of uh, of talent, um, fun leadership. Uh, they kept it real, <laughs> so to speak, and uh, you know I, I couldn't ask for any more. And you know I think that the classes below them learnt so much uh, from them uh, on the on the way to run things. And uh, you know because we're only coaches, we can only be there so long. That's really what we do off the field, and when we're not around and when we're not looking, that makes a big difference. And the ownership that this crew or this uh, this uh, the three of them had was a tremendous. So uh, thank you. Thank you, Coach. We'll now go to the floor for questions. Tommy Dees, Tuscaloosa News. For, for Mike and Jared, and can you uh, tell us what, what you saw on the play at the plate on the, the missed tag or the, the, what was ruled a missed tag? Well, I had a pretty good pretty good view. Obviously, I was in the camera well right there, and um, uh, I know she he, the ball clearly beat her by a long way, got the tag on her. So if it was 50-50, it should be out, in my opinion. I mean, that's the way it is. Whenever the ball beats you, it should be out. I don't care how close it was. And, uh, you know, I consider her out. That's just my opinion. And of course, it doesn't matter what my opinion is. It matters what the umpire calls it. Uh, it's just, just a shame it couldn't have been a one-run game going into the last innings. Um, but, you know, uh, he's got to call it the way he sees it. And that's the end of it. Sheridan? Um, pretty much the same thing. I, I, as well, thought it was a really close play in the um, – you know, obviously that's his call. Coach Greg Eckler for the Oregonian. Uh, can you talk about the factors behind your mound or your circle decision today? Uh, yeah, um, I think, you know, you could say, hey, let's just get to the next game. Let's just get to the next game. But, you know, we're here to win the tournament, you know. And if we're going to win the tournament, we can't just rely on Sheridan Hawkins. We've got to have our other players play and make contributions. And uh, if we're going to do that, uh, Chris has always pitched well on the heat. And she pitched well. She did exactly what I wanted out of her, was get me at least once, twice through the order. And then if it's close, bring in Sheridan, and we'll see what we can get to that next game. And uh, that's, she did exactly what I wanted from her. A tremendous job by her. And, and for Sheridan to come in and, and uh, after that leadoff hit and getting out of that inning. Um, so you know, I, I can't be any more proud of what my team did. We just didn't put the numbers up on the board. And a lot of that has to do with Jackie Trainer. What a tremendous career so far, and of course it's still going. You know, one of them's going to win a World, Ser World Series. I'm not sure which one. Uh, they're both equally talented, uh, and it comes down to inches. I mean, if you look at this game, I mean, how many line drives did we hit in that game? If home run, maybe a three feet foul. Uh, you know, that's this game. That's where it goes. You know, uh, that uh, pitch to Haley McClenney, three inches further inside. That's a that's a jam job to right field. You know, but. Uh, again, you know that's part of the game. That's why we play it, and that's what makes it a tremendous game: is the unknowns and the and the the, the factors there when you play and the big big line on it. Yeah, for, for Mike, uh, Kaylee, and Alexa, can you tell us a little more, especially Mike, from your perspective with your background on what makes Trina so effective? We can all see the seventy or seventy-one on the board, but I, I would assume there's more to it than that. Um. She just challenges. She's around the plate, you know. And sometimes, uh, 
you know, you got to get going. You've got to be good at stopping your swing, you know. And uh, she didn't really use a changeup today, which was kind of surprising. She threw it a couple of times. Maybe she thought I was going to pick it or something. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, she just flat out blew it by us. You know, you got to give her props for that. Um, but, you know, she, she's able to throw different pitches out there. She can throw that low curveball. She can throw the screw, you know, the drop. So it's hard to sit on any one pitch. Um, and, uh, you know, truthfully, i got to look at the tape. I don't know if we made enough adjustments. We might have given up too much of the outside corner. And against good pitching, and I've been telling the ladies this all year, they're going to take advantage of anything you give them. And I think she took advantage of it. Alexa. I think she did a really good job at um, just, like, controlling what she could control. So whatever the umpire was giving her, she was using that to her, towards her advantage. And um, she would you know, make a curveball outside. And if she got us to swing at it, she'd move it two more inches farther out. And so she did a good job at really just controlling where she wanted to throw and uh, made it tough on, on us hitters. Uh, I agree. I think that she knew that we were out there being maybe a little too over aggressive. And she moved it a couple inches off. And we were, you know, we were going for some big swings and maybe we needed to short up a little bit. But um, she did a good job at placing it, I think. Her fans sided. Uh, Courtney, could you talk about uh, the environment and being on the big stage and also uh, what the fan support has meant to you and your teammates? Um, I mean, the big stage, this is what we live for. This is what we work for since we were young and what we worked for all year. So being out here and being able to play in front of all these fans and little kids and our parents and all the people back home, it's just an amazing feeling. Um, it definitely lives up to everything that everyone's ever told us that it was going to be. And it just means a lot to us to be able to, you know, represent our school and our family here as a team and our families back home as well. Coach, you've seen both Alabama and Florida this week. How do you see those two matching up in that championship? That's a great question. Yeah, I'm not sure. You know, it's going to be who gets makes most of their breaks. They're both pitching very well. Um, obviously, Han and Rogers just gave up their first runs, and I don't know how many innings. Uh, and uh, there's no secrets between those two. They know each other pretty well. Uh, defensively, uh, Florida, I think, may have a little bit of an edge. Uh, you know, the way they play the, the middle infield there is pretty, pretty tight. Uh, not to say that anybody's bad, but I'm just asking you who's got the edge there. And uh, offensively, uh, you know, possibly Florida may have a little bit of an edge there, but uh, they're very equal. This is, it's going to be a great series, uh, and uh, I wish I could stick around and watch it, but I've got to get on a charter tomorrow or a flight tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock. So, uh, but it's, uh, it, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be a good series. Coach Pete Lafleur, college softball 360. Uh, we we were talking to Coach Murphy about McLeany and how what a unique leadoff hitter she is, with all the tools she has with her speed game and her back control, but then to get the big home run. How would you assess where she, her place in the in the college game right now and how unique that is? Well, you know, uh, what is she a freshman, right? A sophomore, a sophomore. You know, it's early in her career yet. You know, she's got a way to go yet. But uh, in, in typically what happens, people make adjustments and we, and we see how they handle those types of things. But she's a very talented player. Obviously, to, to come up on the big stage and get the big home run, take advantage of, uh, you know, the, the one, the very few times we came inside on her, you know, uh, you, that's, that's a player. You take the most of an opportunity that's given to you. So hats off to her. She's a great outfielder, does a good job out there, good all round ball player. Um, you know, so props to her. I just, I think we may have had a leadoff header maybe a little bit better. But I, I might be biased. I'm not sure. Coach. Over here. Yeah. Uh, you had talked about, uh, well, actually, th this is the furthest that the, the Ducks have been here at the World Series. Can you address the degree of difficulty of getting to the championship series? Well, I, yeah. I mean, I think you've got to win one of those first two games. I think that's the, the big hurdle we've got to get to. And, uh um, you know, we, we keep making steps. We're going forward. Uh, that's that's the good news. Obviously, we took a little step back last year, but uh, uh, it, it, I tell you what, it's hard just to get here. You know, let alone to the championship series. And things got to go your way. You got to get some breaks. You got to get, um, you know, even some little things. So uh, you know that uh, make it. Make, there's other, other little things you get to this championship series. You got to have everything you go. It includes getting good umpire calls. It means getting the luck. You know, there's there's so much to it. Uh, but we also got to have a talented team. And this year I had an excellent uh, team. Uh, the big factor for us was coming in was could we pick up from Jess Moore leaving and Sam Pappas and Ali Berger and Kendall Howard. And I think we answered that. 
you know, as much as I said yesterday about Oklahoma having the, you know, some question marks, I think there was a lot of question marks surrounding this team. We started off the season ranked 15th or 16th, I believe. Um, I could be wrong on that one, but in, and picked to finish third in the Pac-12. Well, we repeated as champions, you know, and that's not easy. I don't care what you say about the Pac-12. It's not that bad a conference. And, uh, you know, to win that back-to-back, -back, tremendous. To get back to the College World Series, tremendous. You know, from where people were picking us and what we did, Sheridan Hawkins stepped up like a champion that she is. Chris Hovengay stepped up on the big stage. Uh, my corners, uh, you know, CEO and Quico were a tremendous leadership job. Nikki Udria is a freshman. I mean, wow, you see her glove out there, the way she handles balls and attacks it? Tremendous. Corinne Shaver, a kid that even plays shortstop. You know, this is a very talented team, and, and I'm so excited because I know next year we have four more kids coming in that will be able to do the job for us. And uh, they'll never replace these guys. We, ain't, we can't do that, but we're ready to build on top of what we've achieved so far. Courtney, I know your sister's played uh, college softball, so you probably have perspective about different programs within <coughs> Pac-12, Big 12, what, what have you. How would you assess what Oregon softball stands for now? What the, not so much the mission statement, but, but what, what, what you guys want to be known as, what you, you as seniors, what you want your legacy to be in helping the program move forward. I think in general, just from our freshman year, we wanted to be looked at as one of the top teams in the nation. And throughout the years, the four years that we've been here, um, we've absolutely accomplished that, getting better each year and setting a standard for our upperclassmen as well as our lower classmen. just that we do things right, we do things with class, um, we help each other out. We're a family here. Um, we use that word a lot, and it, it's not we're just not throwing it around. We really are a family. We care about each other on and off the field, and we care about our staff, not just our coaches, but everyone else involved. who's involved, our managers, our you know, um, equipment people, our administration, everyone. Um, we care about them as a family. And just the standard that we set that you take care of people and you use manners and you just you be morally correct people, and it's more about our personalities. And then we also have very talented people on the field. so. Just all around good people, and that's what our that's what our team brings.